Mike, and welcome to Retro Boost. Thank you so much for 600 plus subscribers. I can't believe it. That's so awesome. To everyone who has subscribed, I thank you so much for helping support me grow the channel. To everyone who's watching, I appreciate you being here. Definitely consider subscribing. It's the best way to help me continue growing, but I do appreciate you watching regardless. Let's now get into today's topic, the Rad 2X Nintendo. I've talked about RetroTink and Retro Gaming Cables UK quite a bit on the channel, talking about things like the RetroTink 2X Pro, a great line doubling device that accepts a variety of inputs, composite S video component, the picture quality output, especially when using component, is awesome. I've also talked about the 5X Pro, which is a much more advanced model. It adds SCART to the accepted inputs, and instead of just line doubling, it's like a full-on upscaling device that outputs 1080p and even beyond. Plus, it supports a just giant variety of customizable features, whether it be horizontal aspect or scan line generation, all kinds of things. An extremely capable and advanced device. For Metro Gaming Cables UK, I've talked about their cables before. I use a lot of them, mainly my Sega Genesis. It's using uh, Retro Gaming Cables shielded Genesis component cable, and their RCA to Phoenix adapters uh, are what makes my Xtron matrix switch work. Without those parts, I wouldn't have been able to adopt Xtron. It's awesome. Uh, so I've used a lot of products from both these companies before, but never one that comes from both simultaneously. So the Rad 2X is an HDMI adapter. Uh, there are a variety of them that work for different consoles, but they are powered by RetroTink, which is very cool. So that's what we'll be talking about today. We're going to be going over the Rad 2X Nintendo, which works on the Super Nintendo, N64, and GameCube. The real kicker here is that it can run RGB which is like the better output mode that consoles like the Super Nintendo, an RGB modified N64, or a PAL region GameCube can output, which, considering the price of the Rad 2X, is the kind of performance you really wouldn't see unless you're using some kind of line doubler that accepts SCART, and SCART cables, like shielded ones, are not cheap, nor are shielded component cables for that matter, so the value of what this can do here is pretty incredible. So we're gonna check this out. We'll go over a little more about the Rad 2X's setup, what the inputs and output is, the cables it uses to connect to your TV, the smoothing feature, we'll go over all that, and then we'll show it in action. We'll do some demonstrations of RGB mode from like the Super Nintendo, composite from the N64. I do have an RGB modified uh, N64. It does have the Diebler mod as well. We'll go over that too. Uh, and then GameCube performance. So let's get into it, talk a little more in detail about what the Rad 2X is. Taking a closer look at the Rad 2X, it's a pretty small, compact device. It uses the multi-AV socket that a lot of Nintendo consoles use uh, from SNES through the GameCube generation. For its output, it does have HDMI, but it's HDMI Mini C. That initially kind of threw me off because like for some reason when I read that I was like, oh, it's mini HDMI, I have plenty of those. It's not that, it's mini C, it's a little bit different. I did have to get that from uh, like Amazon basically. My local like Best Buy and other stores nearby did not carry that. It's a, I guess, slightly obscure variant. Um, so just be aware of that. Retro Gaming Cables does sell one themselves if you wanted to buy the device and that cable at the same time, they offer that. Uh, so that's what it uses as an output medium. And then you can just get like a mini C2 standard HDMI to then connect it to your display. Simple as that. Upon powering up the device, the light will indicate what mode it's in. Yellow for composite-based input. Purple for RGB mode, which is like the higher quality of the two. There's also a smoothing filter you can toggle on or off. Very similar to like what the RetroTink devices offer in terms of what they do for smoothing. Very handy for consoles like the N64 and GameCube, basically 3D graphics in general. For the Super Nintendo, I definitely prefer leaving that turned off. And for some situations with N64, I leave it turned off as well. Just kind of depends. 
that's the kind of basic overview of the device. Not much to talk about. It's very simple, which is a good thing. It's easy to use. That's definitely a selling point here, that it's a much more simplistic way of getting maximum performance out of your game consoles. You don't need to have a bunch of other accessories like getting better cabling, things like that. It's a very compact, clean little package here, what you get. Let's take a look now at what the device actually can do with these game consoles. We'll do Super Nintendo RGB gameplay uh, first. Uh, again, the smoothing filter turned off. Uh, so just a variety of examples here for the Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo experience, thanks to it being able to grab onto RGB, is fantastic. I definitely prefer the smoothing filter to be left off for the Super Nintendo. It's the, mo it's the more authentic experience in terms of the graphical flavor. Uh, but I love how clear, defined, and colorful everything was. The Rad 2X does a fantastic job with the Super Nintendo. Let's move on now to the N64, where we now get a couple of different ways of doing this. So, if you have a standard N64, it'll be composite-based output, and the Rad 2X will line double and, and you know, do what it can to clean it up and everything. If you have an RGB modified system, much like the Super Nintendo, it'll grab onto that RGB quality and then convert that from there instead. Let's first check out composite-based output. <laughs> Yeah. 
Composite based N64 is quite good. Definitely prefer the smoothing filter to be on. It's also worth noting that the whole experience was like very jitter free, didn't really have any issues that really stuck out to me, and what few little graphical weirdness things there were were pretty limited to like the background or objects that were farther away. Uh, the presentation overall was quite good. So if you have an N64, it's a regular N64, you're be running composite, you're gonna be happy with this. It's 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 way better than just like getting one of those like more generic -y suspect converters or just going straight into a like a television that does basic conversion stuff like that. It's, we're definitely beyond that. So very good. Now let's check out the RGB side of things. I do have an RGB modified N64. Uh, it's got the Diebler ability as well, uh, so we're going to look at this a couple different ways. Let's check out first, just kind of like standard performance, no Diebler, uh, with and without smoothing. We'll check that out, and then I'll switch it up and we'll go into Diebler after that, Diebler with and without smoothing. So let's see all of these examples. Okay, so RGB mode, definitely a step up above composite mode for the N64. As far as how you get RGB in the N64, there are a variety of options. There's a lot of different kits out there that do different things. So 
I purchased my uh, RGB modded N64 from eBay like a year ago. It was before I really had a full understanding of what options and services were out there, and I've definitely regretted buying it that way ever since. I do plan on basically getting one modded through one of the official services so I can do kind of a review of that whole process. Uh, the one that I have, like I said, is one that has the Deebler ability installed in it as well. Uh, it works fine, I never had a problem with it. Uh, I was worried initially that maybe it was going to be a, be an issue or, or, or I mean, hell, I could have gotten scammed. That's why I don't recommend doing that again, but I was dumb and impatient. That's where I am now. So, brings me to my next point. Deebler or no Deebler? Like, what do you prefer? I think a lot of that's definitely preferential. Uh, as far as my favorite picture flavor there, I definitely liked no Deebler uh, better. Uh, the Rad 2X does such a great job with this picture source. Uh, no Deebler with or without smoothing, I could really take that either way. I think they both have their merits for the flavor of picture they create. Uh, I enjoy them both quite a bit. As far as when we add the Deebler mod to the equation, I think Deebler without smoothing is the way that I prefer that personally. Um, I just kind of like having it one extreme or the other, I guess. And Deebler without smoothing is so interesting to look at, knowing that it's N64. Like, it almost looks like digitized like Mortal Kombat graphics or like Nintendo DS almost. And I think it's just exceptionally clean when the Rad 2X is handling it, so I quite like that. But it's definitely preferential here, what you think is the best. What I'll do now is show off some comparisons here. Uh, so before we get into GameCube, what I want to do is kind of look back and do some side-by-sides on what we've seen so far uh, from the experience. So I'm going to show off like... Deebler versus no Deebler, smoothing filter versus no smoothing on all these different formats. Get a kind of experience here of what all these different options are. Since there are a lot of options, seeing them side by side is probably the most efficient way to just kind of communicate what you may like or may not like the most. So here we go, everything we've seen so far, side by side, then we'll get into GameCube.
Fornaria, fourth planet of the Lilat system. The evil Andros turned this once thriving system into a wasteland of near extinction. General Pepper of the Cornerian army was successful in exiling this maniacal scientist to the barren, deserted planet Venom. Five years later, General Pepper noticed strange activity coming from Venom. James McLeod, Pigma Dangar, and Peppy Hare of the Star Fox team were sent to investigate. Upon their arrival, Pigma betrayed the team, and James and Peppy were captured by Andros. Peppy barely escaped Venom and returned home to tell James' son, Fox, about his father's fate. A few years have passed. Andros has again invaded the Lilat system. General Pepper has turned to a new Star Fox team headed by Fox McCloud to save Corneria and free the Lilat system once again. It's about time you showed up, Fox. You're the only hope for our world. I'll do my best. Andros won't have his way with me. Good luck. Open the wing. System. Falco here. I'm fine. This is Pepe. All systems go. Let me here. I'm okay. I see him up ahead. Let's rock and roll. Okay, now that we've seen all the side-by-sides of what we've experienced thus far, hope that helps in determining what style and output modes uh, you would prefer. And I'm curious to know, if you have RGB modded 64s, like, what do you do? Do you have deep blur? Do you not have deep blur? What do you prefer? I'd like to know, because I'm still, you know, I'm still learning my way with a lot of this stuff, especially the, uh, the modded console space. 
Uh, I'm still very much uninitiated in that realm of products. So I'd be curious to know what you guys are using. Let me know. Let's move on now to the GameCube. Now this is where we get, it gets a little interesting now. So I think for a Super Nintendo, the Rad 2X, absolute S rank, Grand Slam home run. For N64, it's good, but with an RGB modded one, it's way better, that's, that's very clear. Now for GameCube, we got two situations here. So it can run composite mode out of a regular GameCube, or if it was a PAL region GameCube, it can grab onto RGB. That I can't show, I don't have one. What I do have are devices like the Carby, which can give you progressive output, like 480p mode output, uh, convert that to HDMI, or like, you know, using component cables, much the same kind of thing with devices like the 5X Pro. Those are excellent ways of getting a video output from the GameCube. The Rad 2X, you know, it's it's not gonna be able to do that because it can't. It's not using that digital AV port uh, on mine, so it's composite output only. So let's take a look at what the composite experience looks like, though. <laughs> Overall, not bad. And as I was kind of thinking before that demo, there are definitely superior ways to get the GameCube enhanced. Uh, Carby is another like great one. If all you owned was a GameCube, get yourself something like the Carby. It's excellent. It does require that you have a specific model of GameCube, the DOL001, that has that digital port. Uh, if you have that, that's the clear device to get. If you owned a GameCube and a Super Nintendo, the Rad 2X still may make sense to you though, because it works on either one. It's just going to be far better on devices that support RGB output than devices that don't. So overall, GameCube is fine. It's very, it's it's better than nothing, uh, but definitely not as good as some of the alternatives I've talked about in the past, like the Carby or using component cables from companies like say Retrobit and running that through the 5X Pro or the 2X Pro M, taking advantage of that like native 480p output mode that it can do. As far as smoothing versus no smoothing, the GameCube definitely benefits from smoothing. When comparing side by side, the non-smoothy, the non-smoothing side, the non-smoothy side, the non-smoothing side is not as good to look at. It isn't like the N64 where having no smooth added to that like digital picture flavor you're not really getting that benefit here so GameCube performance is okay but there are definitely superior options out there so what are we thinking here well the Rad 2X is an excellent device that delivers excellent performance at 
an excellent price point. Because uh, considering where it sits, which is roughly 70 US dollars, you can get the kind of output that you would normally have to get through a combination of products that would total easily $200 plus from getting shielded component cables, stuff like the RetroTink 2X Pro or 5X Pro, those, those can scale up to be hundreds of dollars. And here the Rad 2X is giving it to us out of devices like the Super Nintendo for that $70 price tag. N64, it's a little more complicated because you gotta factor in the process of getting the console modded, whether you do it yourself or through a service. Definitely not the cheapest thing in the world, but the device itself providing you that HDMI conversion and how it handles the image quality, very good. If you only had a GameCube, I definitely can't recommend this, strictly knowing because of what else is out there as far as other options. If it's a GameCube that has that digital AV port, stuff like the Carby comes in at a similar cost and offers excellent performance. But for the Super Nintendo and N64, the Rad 2X is an amazing device that I very much enjoy and will be using a lot going forward, especially for N64. I think it's my new mainstay N64 solution because I really enjoy the picture quality. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. It is the best way to help me grow the channel. And thanks again for over 600 subscribers. I can't believe that. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.